Hi everyone, this is Trevor reporting from Winnipeg Alternative Media and uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the new gene edited mushrooms that were recently developed and the United States Department of Agriculture they're not going to be regulating these mushrooms as they do normally with other genetically modified organisms and uh, the mushrooms they are gene edited and uh, they'll not brown sort of like the arctic apple and the innate potatoes and usually the GMOs are regulated by the USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service and they keep an eye out for new GMOs that may pose a risk to plant health and the mushrooms they're developed by Yin Yan Yang he's a plant pathologist at Penn State University and he created the mushrooms using CRISPR-Cas9 technology and he engineered the common white but button mushroom to resist browning and uh, he achieved this by targeting the family of genes that encodes polyphenol oxidase which is an enzyme that causes browning and by deleting just a handful of base pairs in the mushroom's genome Yang knocked out one of six polyphenol oxidase genes reducing the enzyme's activity by 30% and these mushrooms are not the first crop to be modified by CRISPR, Cas9, but it's the first one that is not subject to regulation from the USDA. And the mushroom is a, one of about 30 genetically modified organisms to sidestep the USDA regulatory system in the past five years. And in each case, the agency's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service has said that the organisms, mostly plants, do not qualify something the agency must regulate and several of the plants that bypass the USDA they are created using gene editing techniques such as the zinc finger nuclease and transcription activator like effector nucleus talon systems and once a crop passes the USDA reviews it may still undergo a voluntary review by the US Food and Drug Administration and the USDA they say that the CRISPR edited mushroom doesn't need regulation because it doesn't contain any introduced genetic material or foreign DNA and thus would not be a threat to other plants and it seems that gene edited foods are the new GMOs since gene edited foods are not subject to regulation from the USDA you can expect to see a lot more gene edited foods in the future and could G GMOs be a thing of the past and a new type of uh, gene edited foods being replacing them and uh, using CRISPR and other gene editing techniques eliminates the need for the tremendous costs and time and money that companies would need to invest in order to get regulatory approval if it were actually to be labeled a GM organism it can take more than five years and tens of millions of dollars to gain GM organism approval in the United States and scientists who use CRISPR applaud this loophole because they believe it will lead to more innovation and Patty Lovera of Food and Water Watch which is a group focused on corporate and government accountability relating to food, water, fishing they argued that the USDA decision is a perfect illustration of how weak regulations for evaluating genetically engineered crops are. And the United States, they're revamping their rules for regulating GMOs. And uh, it's collectively known as the Coordinated Framework for Regulation of Biotechnology. And the US National Academy of Sciences engineering and medicine have convened a committee that is charged with predicting what advances will be made in biotechnology products over the next ten, five, to ten, five to ten years and it's held its first meeting on April 18th and the developer of these gene edited mushrooms Yinan Yang he's mulling over whether to start a company to commercialize his modified mushrooms he says I need to talk to my dean about that We'll have to see what the university wants to do next. 
He says about the prospect of bringing his mushroom to market, but he notes that in September 2015, Penn State filed a provisional patent application on the technology. And I myself, I hope it doesn't come to market, and I don't think that mushrooms turning brown are a problem, and don't think we need them to be on the market. And I think all GMOs should be labeled if they are for sale and they should be grown in controlled environments so they do not contaminate other farmers fields and get loose in the wild and I think that these crops should be independently tested for safety although I feel all of them they carry risks and aren't safe and we'll have to see what the new regulations bring for GMOs in the United States thanks for watching everyone